In practical terms, there really aren't any differences because an adversary proceeding is governed by certain rules uh, in the 7000 series of the Federal Rules of Bankruptcy Procedure. So the basic structure is still the same. Uh, creditor uh, or whoever is filing the adversary uh, complaint, because debtor can do that just as much as the creditor. Uh, the plaintiff files the adversary complaint. There is a certain amount of time uh, in which the defendant can file an answer to that complaint. Then um, uh, when the plaintiff has filed the complaint, the plaintiff uh, will also send a summons with that complaint to the defendant. And that uh, summons will not only give the deadline by which the defendant has to file the answer, but will also set a date for a status conference before the judge. And you go to that status conference and the judge will start off by saying, well, uh, is there any hope of settling this? If it looks like yes, the judge may say, okay, go settle. Or um, the judge may say, well, it looks like maybe we need to set a timetable. Now, some judges will add an additional layer before setting the timetable and say, I want you to go to mediation first so that you don't waste the resources of the bankruptcy court. So we go to that mediator and Mediators, at least in the Central District of California, are supposed to do the mediation for free, at least a certain amount of time. And so you go to the mediator, and uh, sometimes mediators can uh, resolve the issue. I've had that happen, where uh, the mediator was able to uh, go back and forth from room to room, uh, defendant being in one room, plaintiff being in the other, and resolve the matter so that there's a settlement. And then uh, you take the settlement, uh, memorialize it in a settlement agreement, submit it to the court with a motion under Rule 99, uh, 9019 of the Federal Rules of Bankruptcy Procedure. The judge will approve it, and then that settles it. Sometimes mediation is just a complete waste of time, and I've certainly had that as well. All right, so you go back to the judge. The judge will set a timetable. Uh, the first big chunk of time is discovery. What is discovery? Well, as the name suggests, each side is trying to discover stuff that will help it in the adversary proceeding. So during that period of discovery, each side has the opportunity to ask for documents from the opposition, uh, ask for admissions of fact, ask for answers to questions, and those questions are usually referred to as interrogatories, and depose witnesses. A deposition, you bring somebody in, there's a court reporter, that person is sworn in, and you ask questions of that person under oath. So once discovery is done, that's it. You've, you've had your bite at the apple as far as getting information from the other side. At that point, um, then uh, you'll uh, meet and confer and ha uh, probably have a status conference with the judge saying, well, this is where uh, things stand. The judge will say, okay, I want uh, the trial date to be set at such and such a date, and you need to submit the, um, uh, the joint pretrial stipulation uh, within uh, such and such a date. So uh, that pretrial stipulation is a list of the things both sides agree on. We're not going to relitigate whether we're in California. Um, and then it'll list those things where, sorry, we just don't agree. Um, I don't uh, uh, concede this fact. I don't concede this fact. So that's submitted to the judge. So the judge has a roadmap and stuff that is of uh, inconsequential value is discarded. There are also uh, time deadlines on filing motions. There can be what are called dispositive motions, motions that if you file this, that ends it. It's over. Um, or motions to exclude evidence. Those are done uh, via what are called motions in limine, that uh, before the trial, we're just discarding this altogether. And then eventually you have the trial, which is uh, generally before the judge. And each side gets to put on its case uh, with the plaintiff starting the plaintiff will have an opening statement where it says, this is what this case is about. This is what we're shooting to establish uh, in this court. 
then um, the defendant will have an opening statement saying, well, this is what we think the case is about. By the way, the order is uh, somewhat malleable, although this is generally the way it goes. Then uh, the, defend, uh, the plaintiff gets to put on its witnesses, and there are documents that are submitted. Some judges will have um, testimony by declaration, written uh, declaration, so that um, that sort of uh, streamlines the uh, process. But then the other side gets to cross-examine in person or sometimes via Zoom. Uh, and then the other side has the same uh, uh, procedures it goes through. Then when the smoke all clears on that, the judge will enter an order, a judgment saying, this is what I find. And uh, then each side uh, has decisions to make. Uh, does a side want to ask uh, the court to reconsider its holding? Does that side want to appeal? Um, or does that side want to just accept the verdict and that's the end of it? Obviously, each side has that as an option. So that is really independent of what chapter we're dealing with. Now, the one wrinkle in Chapter 13 is you have a Chapter 13 plan of reorganization that is being propounded. In Chapter 7, there is no such plan. You know what the debts are. You know what the assets are. Pretty much everything is established. But there can be a problem in Chapter 13, and that is if the gravamen of the adversary proceeding centers on what, uh, what uh, a particular debt is, what the dollar amount is, then that can hold up the confirmation of the Chapter 13 repayment plan because the plan is going to be dependent on how large that debt is and whether or not that debt is dischargeable in a Chapter 13. So that can be a real problem. And there are different directions you can go. You could ask the judge to confirm the plan uh, with the understanding that at some later date, once this adversary proceeding has been resolved, the plan will be modified to accommodate whatever uh, results came out of that adversary proceeding. Or the judge might be asked to stay the whole um, confirmation process pending the resolution in the adversary proceeding. It does get to be a bit messy because the plan can only last for five years. So if the judge is going to confirm the plan and the adversary takes two years to resolve, most of the time they get resolved sooner than that. But there are some, and I've had them, where they just go on and on and on. Uh, then by the time it's resolved, you only have three years, let's say, left in the plan. You might not be able to make provision to pay that debt over the life and the remaining life of the plan. And the plan cannot last more than five years. We will say a couple of years back during the pandemic, uh, there was a provision that permitted uh, debtors to extend the plan up to seven years, but that provision has expired. So you're stuck with the five-year maximum.